China's population has shrunk for the first time in 60 years. Now, what does that mean for the country? But also, what type of questions does that raise for the globe in general? Oh, man, this is going viral right now. New York Times dropped an article about it. There's so many videos on YouTube about it. And there are hundreds of thousands of comments. People feel this way. People right. feel that way. We got to get into it. We got to talk about China first. Then we got to talk about a lot most industrialized countries where this is just a common trend in general, even though for different reasons. And then number three, we just got to get into humanity in general. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Andrew, what's going on in China? What is causing this article to go so viral? Well, I think that China's population not not only the birth rate is declining, but actually the population has declined. Like they have like 850,000 less people than they did last year. Now that could be for a number of reasons, right? COVID or whatever. But basically people are not having as many kids and there's not a lot of kids to even have kids because a lot of people are pointing out the one child policy. As we know, it got really ugly. It was a very extreme thing to do. Um, they did it in an effort to save like almost up to 400 million people. However, there was a lot of other ramifications now in the future. There is an imbalance of men and women. There's over, there's more, there's 30 million more men than women in China. So that means that there's a bunch of millions of single dudes who are not going to be able to uh, have another branch on the family tree. They call them bare branches. You know, I'm glad that uh, we saved some of the famine and the resource fighting and the water usage, but uh, now I'm a bare branch. I will never bear any leaves. Yeah, and I feel very sad about that. Yeah, it's uh, getting uh, pretty lonely. And now I'm starting to spend my paycheck on these streamers who make me feel like I have. No, and I don't want to joke about it because it is, it is, it is a situation. It's a real, it's a real you thing. You know, perhaps uh, we could have went with a two-child policy a little bit earlier and maybe like, you know, just change some things around so it's not so extreme. Well, you know, in the Western world, we also have a problem of too many single men, but it's not because of the one child policy. It's because of these progressive policies for women and they want to work and then they don't want to have kids. Well, it's tough. I mean, hindsight is always twenty twenty, but I think that a lot of people around the world are looking at China because it is the largest country in the world, although I believe India is going to overtake in population this year. So a lot of people are looking at the ramifications economically. They're looking at the ramifications as just like a, a marker for what's going to happen in other countries. You know, obviously Japan and Italy, they're way further on their like depopulation map journey mm. already. But um, Andrew, what are people thinking about this from a capitalistic level? Because yeah. there's so many levels there's like uh, the family level internally, which is like, oh, we're worried all the kids are going to be little emperors, Xiao Huangdis. There's a capitalistic level, and there's even like a man versus woman patriarchal, like old yeah. gender role. Angle. Yeah, but taking it out of all of that, I mean, there's a lot of obviously China is kind of one of the centers of the world, right? As far as what they produce, everybody buys from them. They do trade with them. That's why whatever happens in China, you got to pay attention to, right? Uh, and a lot of capitalists are linking, yeah, well, uh, you know, we do so much business with China and they produce so many great, fine goods for us, but if their labor force decreases in the future, who's going to make all the goods for them? And at what price? So is the price going to go up and there's going to be less goods? Man, that's going to be kind of weird. Right. That's going to even affect my business. Right, right. And all the factory infrastructure is already built up and you could say shifted to other markets, but then you have to go lay the groundwork to, exactly. to get all the factories popping yeah. in other markets. Now, now I think... Uh, I don't know if this is a solution or how many immigrants you could bring into China or how appealing China is to a bunch of immigrants, right, to bring into China that could, would fill up the factories and also, I guess, some of them would marry the the men and I, then honestly, repopulate. Honestly, to be honest, to, be, to keep it real, I think the Chinese language is so hard in life there. It, it's not bad, but it's, like, definitely not the most appealing uh, to people who are used to, like, living their way, to be well, honest. So that's not going to happen. Um, I would say on the anti-capitalistic viewpoint, a lot of people are like, finally, this whole Ponzi scheme for the last 150 years of global capitalism can come to an end, and we can find something more sustainable not only for Mother mm -hmm. Nature, but for the Earth in general, because if for the longest time, the last 150 years, we've maintained a serf peasant system, but we've sort of put it underneath the guise of global capitalism where people are born into these like low wage factory jobs they got to work for 20 30 40 years it's no different than just the old school dynastic things where there was elites and peasants and middle level people this whole thing needed to come yeah. to an end anyway it was yeah. a whole scam <laughs> yeah for sure no and and i mean i think there's an argument for less stuff in the world but also also some very smart guys but controversial guys like elon musk and jordan peterson are the type to be like you you need more humans you need to have kids so that you can innovate more because the humans they innovate and then that's going to make the world better for everybody right you're saying that elon and jordan peterson they're almost making the uh man must like push mankind yeah. forward at all costs argument yeah. right and then of course that's a very like i guess american capitalistic way of thinking i think there's pros and cons to that on the other side andrew there's almost more like a canadian thinking you know like hey why don't we like um 
you know, we slow it down. Oh, yeah, we like progress, but, you know, not when there's progress and a bunch of people are, like, having bad lives and being hurt by it. Yeah, no, and sometimes there is a beauty in just having enough of what you need, but I think that, I don't know, I think any advanced society is past that attitude because we just want more and more. We want more fun, more things, more food, more, ah, right? But anyways, uh, I think that, David, China, to take the focus a little bit off of China because there's, there's other countries that are going through the same thing. Right. Now, it might be on different levels, and I think, again, China being such a big country means that anything that happens in China involves like a hundred times the amount of people than it does in other countries. So we have to understand this. It's almost just a magnified problem. Yeah. I mean, like we said, Japan and Italy, they're way further along that arc already. Japan, they're going with robots. Italy's just going with sticking with whatever they got, to be honest, from what I believe. So I think that everybody's going to have to figure it out. And it's just so interesting that the whole depopulation of the world thing just became such a big issue in the past like six months. Yeah, well, I think people had always been talking about it, but when a big dog like China and it's clear that they're going through it, then it becomes like a global issue, right? I mean, even Japan has been talking about this for decades, right? right? They, even like the kind of culture- we want <laughs> ro robots or immigrants? We choose robots. Oh, uh, you know, I'm into the street style and the Harajuku style much more than I am into having children. Yeah, you know, like, well, th there was the whole idea of like the herbivore man who's more into style and is like you know whatever anyways but i guess what i guess i'm trying to say is like is there anything that china could do to an, or these countries could do to entice people to have kids or could china entice women to come back well one Seems thing tough. i saw for example in japan and japan is a very different system right because they're a very rich country uh, i've seen them like incentivize people with like cash payouts to move out of the city into the burbs because they feel like people have more kids once they're in a house in the burbs with more space i just think that in general society would have to change i think the pressure on the women is too much and you know i definitely don't believe in people are like you know we need to bring it back to the old school patriarchal gender roles where the woman stays at home and has a bunch of kids i don't actually think that that's true but i just think that some of the pressures need to be eased off of it but i just don't know how you would accomplish that because it would be actually like a societal shift and society yeah. is made of like so many different moving parts i i guess another question is like what's even a good amount of people for the earth is, yeah you're right is it five billion is it 12 billion i think right now we're at 7 billion and a lot of people think it's going to cap and then go backwards at 9 billion. So who knows, man? Yeah. You know, what's funny is that there was all these sci-fi movies and all this talk like 15 years ago. I remember where everybody was like, dude, the world's going to get overpopulated. The world's going to get overpopulated. And now it kind of looks like that it might even decrease overall, if not stay the same. You know right. what I mean? And uh, so maybe that's kind of uh Earth itself or society itself just kind of like moving in waves and cycles, right? I don't know. I but guess for me, I don't really take like this ultra capitalistic Jordan Peterson, Elon Musk perspective. Surprise. And I also don't take the like, we just need to love Mother Nature and just like, um, yeah. we're the enemy. Humans are the yeah. cancer. I don't obviously have that perspective either. I'm just like, man, I just hope that we can do more with what we already have. And we can, we could just like do, if we all just thought differently right now on earth about how we distribute resources and stuff like that, the, 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 we could still all have nice things right. and uplift the people who are like in dire, 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 dire need. For sure. I think overall, and I still really believe this, that governments need to do a better job of incentivizing people to have children, right. but like not I just, said, just telling them, right? But not just everybody have children. I mean, like if you feel like you want children, you shouldn't be like held back just because like, ah, oh, I live in the city. I don't live in the city. But ultimately it does, it does come down to the individual because man, our lives are so fun, man. Everybody's lives are so fun. There's so much dopamine to be released and there's so many places to go and food to eat and, and pictures to num, take num, 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 that, num, num. that you don't want to have a kid because then you got to stare at this kid. You don't get to eat food, you have to stare at this kid. So I don't know, people have to make choices, right? But but I don't I know. I think that there should be a test that people can opt in to take about whether or not they should have uh, more children. Like if you're gonna derive dopamine from having a family, which by all the means is dope for some people, but the people who shouldn't have kids shouldn't have kids. And the people who should have kids should be encouraged to have more. I don't know how like to say Like a Myers-Briggs for Parenting. Like I said, I'm not saying everybody should be forced to take it, but like it should be available. All right, everybody, you let us know in the comments down below what you think. We've shared our thoughts. Like, do you think the situation in China is really, really, really bad for China? But also about the world in general, like what responsibility do humans have and do governments have to help people have more children or less children? 
And how bad of a situation is it? We didn't even get to Mars yet. You know, it's all about Mars. We didn't get there yet. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We are the Hot Pop Boys. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.